little shoulder fish. The horizon probably is no more than 15 yards away. I can't get a back cast, so I'm going to have to fish into the trees forwards, flick it out backwards up the river, and hope that it doesn't end up in a tangled mess and scare the fish away. And maybe it's a little bit out of range, but we'll give it a go. Got a big problem now in that all the vegetation on the side of these river banks is pretty much grown up. It's about three or four feet tall, which makes casting an absolute nightmare underneath these trees now. We've got a very small letterbox to cast through. And that was no end here. <laughs> it's out the tree. We've lost one. <laughs> hey man, what am I doing? I managed to get a knot in my line from all that farting around and catching it with the wind. That's the fly I was using, little dry fly. But I've noticed there's a few mayfly hatching out. Not many, but when they are hatching out, the fish are chasing them. Mayfly or a big green fly that hatches out from a, a larvae or nymph that's been in the mud for about anywhere between one and three years, I think. They come out, hatch out, and they form this big upwinged green fly. If I can catch one, I'd like to have a look, but uh, most people watching this will know what a mayfly is. And when the fish start feeding on them, all you've got to do is chuck a mayfly pattern on and you can hammer them. That one's just taking a mayfly over there, absolutely slammed it. So I'm going to try a mayfly pattern. I've got a few. Ah, ha, 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 that's what we are imitating today. Big old mayfly. I'll try and scoop it up so I'll give you some idea of the scale of these things, because the fish absolutely love them. I think the Latin name for this species of mayfly is Ephemeridae danica. It's certainly a big one. You see how soft the bodies are. The fish absolutely devour these things. Love them. And just fishing around in the side of this stretch of river, found two, well, we call them shucks. It's basically the shed skin from the larvae. As they come up to hatch, the split just about here, come out as the adult. These fellas live in the mud, and in the sand, in the bottom of the river. And then they come out when the time's right. And now the time is right. There you go. Dry mayfly pattern. Big old tail on it. That should float well enough. It's got a hellish thick hackle on it, which isn't really suitable for this still water. But I'm going to give it a go. Uh, I just need to flatten the um, barb down on here. I'll chuck it in, see what happens. fish rose on the other side of the river. It's just risen again, but it's it's rising where there's a little stream coming in. Just out of reach. I'm going to try and throw the mayfly over there. This lad's got a bit of weight to him. Oh, yes, he has. Good fight. I don't know if you can see the, the bend on the rod, but this lad's given a good account of himself. Oh, 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 it's nearly bent double. This is one of the times where I wish that traveling ultralight included a net. but it doesn't.
Whoa, ho, ho, what a cracker. Look at that fella. <laughs> what a belter. Beautiful, full fins, lovely colours, big old gob on them. Let's get them back. There he goes. It's just what I like to see. Swimming away nice and slow back into the depths. Away from all those nasty fishermen. So when the mayfly out, the mayfly pattern absolutely hammers the fish. Easily. One thing I don't like about using these big bushy winged flies is that they spin and they make a hell of a mess of the line. So every cast or so, just gotta let it unwind before you cast it out again, otherwise you'll end up in an atrocious tangle. <laughs> Another big fat lad. Get in there. Look at that fella. It's taken the hook right down, but it shouldn't be difficult to get out. There we go. Out easily. Back in to see his buddies. Well, those last two fish must have just been lying side by side because I got that one from exactly the same place as I got the first one. Now I'm not just going to blast straight up to the top of the pool, I'm going to fish my way up. Because halfway up there's another decent fish rising. If I'm careful, I might be able to catch that on my way up to the top. I'm going to have myself a change of fly. Still representing a mayfly, but this is a grey wolf with olive wings. So it's still got that little touch of olive colour in it. No reason why it shouldn't catch fish. Well, it's smaller than the other ones, but it's still a cracking fish. Look at that fella. Maybe he's a pound in weight. Gave a good account of itself and he's going back. I knew it was in trouble as soon as it took the fly. Well, there's the fish. I'm going to stick them straight back. Well, that's about it. Well, that is it. I'm on my way back home now. Now, that little haul of fish might seem pretty good, but take into account the fact that it is mayfly season now. The mayfly were hatching out quite well today, and the fish were feeding on them oh, relentlessly. Basically, as long as you put a fly over them that looks like a mayfly, they'll take it. It's really easy to catch fish in mayfly season. 
And when I was down there, I noticed there was a lot of stones overturned. There's obviously been some worm lads down, or kids, digging up worms and gut hooking the fish. All they need to do is try with a fly rod at this time of year, learn the basics and the basic fly life, and they could have so much more fun, they could catch so many more fish and they wouldn't damage them either. I would just say to anybody who's interested in fishing, try fly fishing, especially at this time of year when there's a good hatch of mayfly on. Even if you're not the best caster, you just slap the fly in, it doesn't really matter. As long as you've got a fly that's more or less like a mayfly, you'll catch fish and there you'll be hooked. It's definitely the best way to catch fish on the fly. Thanks very much for watching. I shall see you in the next video.